everybody and welcome to News Now on Fox 10 Extra. My name is Pilar Arias filling in for Mike Pace. I'm joined with Ron Hoom, but we're taking a live look from our South Mountain Tower. It looks a little hazy out there, a little overcast, but no complaints here because we both know what the temperatures could be like in Phoenix this time of year, right? Yeah, well, I mean, we <laughs> talked about it this morning right next door on Fox 10 and we said, hey, Corey. So Corey McCloskey, one of our very top employees <laughs> here at Fox 10, we said, we brace, you brace yourselves by early to middle May. May to start looking for a forecast that includes multiple days of triple digits. Yeah. And yet, uh, this particular 10 day forecast doesn't have one. <laughs> Speaking of, here it is. <laughs> Call your friends and neighbors and get the party started. Brag. How cool is that? <laughs> 86 tomorrow's going to be down to 81 it's going to be a little cloudy over the weekend mother's day come on mother's day at 80 look at that 77 on saturday i don't even mind that there's like a chance of showers no like, of course cares? not i know it's so great we're so lucky here sometimes we get, yeah. we, get we luck out yeah yeah we really do all right ron thanks for joining us let's get to some stories of the day this is video of the one and only Michael Cohen okay. arriving to prison. Yeah. Now, don't be fooled. It's not that guy right there, but you'll see it in a minute here. <laughs> they had all. They were all ready, you know, for the various. Uh, the different cars SUVs, to, the different cars. Right. They didn't know. Yeah. Right. Oh, here it comes. Here, here it, it comes. Here right there. it comes. Yeah. He didn't show up in the Hyundai. He showed up in the Cadillac SUV. Apparently, he's still got a couple of bucks in his bank account. Who knows? <laughs> um, so the first thing you have to do is stop. Uh, we watched him come rolling up, and um, we thought, well, what's a, what's a hold up here? Well, you got a little security checkpoint you got to clear right there before you continue on. I don't know if you've ever been to that part of, uh, New, of New York State, but it is so beautiful. Upstate New York in that area. It's kind of outside of Cooperstown, you know, the headquarters of baseball in, in the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, West Point is about 25, 20, 25 miles away from there. It is really such a beautiful place. Now, they call it the cushiest prison in America. Who knows? <laughs> Let's hope none of us ever have to find out. Right. Uh, nevertheless, you're giving up your freedom. And uh, in you go. He requested to go to that facility. It's fairly close to his home in New York. You get to hang out with the situation. Right, Mike, the situation from Jersey Shore. I, yeah. uh, unfortunately, that's one of my guilty pleasures. I love that show. Oh, do you really? Good for you. Uh, but anyway, you know, I mean, it's funny. You think about not funny ha-ha, but funny kind of just the way the world turns. Uh, you know, the Mueller report finally comes out, and uh, it doesn't show any collusion. Uh, the president says no collusion, no obstruction. Some of his opponents would say, yeah, maybe there's a little obstruction in there. But here's Michael Cohen. Anyway, it looks like it's not going to cost the president his job or anything like that. And then here's Michael Cohen, you know, who's trying to do the bidding of the president is, quote, his fixer. Uh, but he makes a fateful decision and the wrong decision to lie to Congress in an effort to try to protect the president. Yeah. And boy, it cost him. It cost him three years. And uh, so he'll be in that federal prison for, I don't know, with time off for good behavior, maybe he gets 80% of his sentence, something like that. But it, he'll be in there for somewhere between two and three years. We heard that he spent his final weekend of freedom trying to maintain a semblance of normalcy, leaving his Manhattan apartment uh, on Saturday with his son to go to a coffee shop, then a barber shop where they both got haircuts. Oh. And then they went to uh, Barney's New York, which some would refer to as pricey, uh, where he told journalists that he planned to help a news conference today before heading to prison, but I don't know if you want to call these remarks that are 24 seconds a news conference. I have him. Yeah, you know, I'll give him credit. He was able to stick to the uh, topic at hand. Right. He just kind of delivered his message and uh, yeah, the podium was set up. So if you're ready. Yep, I got it. Go. Here we go. I rejoin my family and friends that the country will be in a place without xenophobia, injustice, and lies at the helm of our country. There still remains much to be told, and I look forward to the day that I can share the truth. And thank you all very much. Very, very brief. Looks forward to the day he can tell the truth is what he said right there. You know, that was kind of an interesting way to uh, wrap it up because 
uh, you're in front of the media. You're right. in front of the microphones. You're going to prison. You can say whatever you want. You pretty much say whatever <laughs> you want. I mean, the sentence has already been passed on. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, you want to know what I think, Pilar? I do. I think he's, his plan is that while he's in prison, he's going to write a book. Yep. A tell-all with everything he knows, and that was what we call in our business a tease. <laughs> yes. Normally in our business, we tease a story that's coming up in five minutes. Right. Michael Cohen just gave us a three-year tease. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of think that's what's <laughs> happening here. I, I think he's probably said, well, I'm going to put my time to use there, and I will write a book, and I will tell everything that needs to be told, because I don't know why he, he had to say what he said. That's the only thing I can read into right, it. Right, right. Yeah. All right, Ron, this next top story. When this happened this morning, I thought of the commercial, we had a baby, it's a boy. You know what? I did, too. <laughs> I was trying to figure out a way to work it to work it in on Fox 10. You know, so you see Harry, you know, and he's over at the phone in the maternity ward, and he's trying to call. You put a call through to the queen. <laughs> okay, fine, Harry, we will. But, I mean, what are you, are you bothering? Her, just let her know we had a baby eats a boy. Right. I know. <laughs> we I had know. a baby eats a boy. I know. We saw the castle in Windsor today, and then oh. Harry did make some remarks saying mom and baby boy are doing well. We're still waiting for the name. We're hearing it could be two days until we know. Oh gosh. What this baby's right. name? But I think they're pretty close to having decided already. Yeah. I mean, don't most married couples when the, you know? I mean, you have nine months, right? You've Ron? got weeks. <laughs> oh, you've got nine months. Yeah. Forty weeks, nine months. I think they probably have decided they're just going to build the excitement for another day or two. Yeah. So it was funny because we got the alert. It was right about 6 a.m. sharp that we got these alerts. Yeah. Uh, that uh, she was in labor. Yeah. Well, within an hour, we heard the, the baby boy was born. Now, uh, I will just say that Harry uh, did state that it was a long, sleepless night. He only got two hours of sleep, so you can bet probably Megan got no sleep. Yeah. And so yeah, it could have been a long delivery. We don't know a lot of those details. We believe that an, in another break, from royal tradition. She did not go to the hospital where we are so used to seeing uh, previous royals emerge, talking about the husbands, <laughs> to share the word uh, that their wife has just delivered, uh, which is the way that William and Kate did it. And they just set up on that little side street in London and they get the picture. So they, uh, we believe that she delivered at Frogmore uh, Cottage. And so that's uh, kind of a cool uh, new uh, first yeah. for the royal family. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of first for royal families, I mean, how many births have they announced on like Instagram, social media like that? You I know. know what I, mean? I know. The whole new day and age, it's like the queen is like, what is happening here? Bro? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. She, by the way, um, she is so fun to follow on Instagram. I know she doesn't do it. I'm sure she has two or three people who do it for her. <laughs> but every day she's out there, you know, wandering around, yeah. shaking hands, kissing babies, accepting flowers, and uh, just bringing smiles to the faces of a lot of folks out there with her kind of her charity work and things like that. That's the one reason why I love social media. We can be in contact with people that we normally can't. Celebrities, high profile politicians. That's a good point. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. People that we normally wouldn't just discuss and have a conversation yeah, with. For so sure. healthy baby boy. Healthy Duchess of Sussex, yeah. and uh, the prince just couldn't be happier. Seven pounds, three ounces, delivered at 526 this morning. So When you're talking about no sleep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, now just think about this for one moment here, Pilar. I'm just doing the math on it. So when we learned about it at about uh, 7 o'clock this our morning, time. our time, uh, we are, I guess, we're, I believe we're nine hours difference. So that would have been at about, uh, oh, gosh. In the afternoon already. Yeah, later, so around three or four. Um, so they actually knew for, I don't know, eight hours or so before they shared the news with the public. Yeah, and then they put the official announcement out in front of yes, the castle, too, did. which that is always, cool. like, so pretty. It's, yep. pretty, it's pretty yep. cool. It is. All right, all right. So uh, we don't have a live picture of the White House, so we're going to have to come up on camera. But everybody's looking forward to 3 o'clock Arizona time, 6 o'clock Eastern. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods is going to be at the White House. Yeah. That's so late. I'm like, come on, let's him here. I was, yeah. like, I was hoping it was going to kind of happen on our watch. But it will be exciting. It yeah. will be cool. Uh, a great honor for Tiger Woods. Um, I know that Tiger has millions of fans and plenty of detractors, too. 
Uh, I happen to be a fan of Tiger Woods, and especially to see a guy who most folks thought he was over the hill, he was never going right. to return to greatness, and he just persevered and he never gave up. Right. And the fact that he that he took that approach and that it paid off for him, and he won not just a golf tournament, he won the Masters. Right. Is just so great. So that'll be fun to watch later today. I would like to be able to use this as a reminder, though, that you can always head to our News Now stream because we're going to go until four o'clock today. So at three o'clock, we will have it. All you have to do is go to youtube.com slash box 10 Phoenix and you can watch it in yep. its entirety yep. there. Yep. We know we have people who watch us uh, on their phone all the time. Yep. So that's great. Yep. Yep. All right, Ron, you and I are avid travelers. We travel quite often, right? Yes. And normally to get through security at the airport, you need what? Uh, well, first of all, you need your ID. That's number one. <laughs> Second of all, you need to make sure you got all your toothpaste out of your uh, out of your carry through. Unless uh, you have TSA pre-check. I have pre-check. I love it. Yeah. And then uh, you got to make sure you have a plane ticket. Yep. Yep. Yep, Except yep, yep. if you're at this one airport now in Florida. Which, by the way, have you ever been TPA Tampa International Airport? Uh, we only landed there. It was a continuation of a flight. I think, I believe, this was a long, 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 long time ago. I think we were going down to see my aunt in Puerto Rico. Yeah. And we didn't even get off the plane. We just landed. And um, I guess they picked up some passengers and, and we continued on. But anyway, they have the only pot belly sandwich shop in the entire state of Florida at the Tampa airport. I've never eaten at pot belly, but I'm hearing today that it's good. <laughs> yeah. And it's past the uh, security checkpoint. Yep. So if you're running pot belly, this is great news for you. This is the uh, kind of an experimental thing. It's the first airport in the nation to say, hey, we're going to, we, maybe we freaked out a little bit. Uh, uh, in terms of the way we clamp down on security by never letting anybody you still have to go through the TSA. Right, you still have to be checked. You're still subject to the x-ray machine or a pat down or anything that you have to go through like that. So you go through the very same emergency procedures and you have to apply for it. Yep. And you have to apply for it at least 24 hours ahead of time so Absolutely. they know you're coming. But it, it takes us back to the good old days. Of, I think the of good old days. enjoying an airport. Of number one, just enjoying an airport. Number two, um, especially if you've got somebody who's flying away. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a girlfriend whose boyfriend is flying back home. Get to see him at the gate. See you him know, off. yeah, it's a uh, it's grandparents saying goodbye to their grandson or what. You get that extra hour yeah. of sitting there at the gate and talking and, and enjoying time with each other. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So TPA calling this a backstage pass for non-travelers. Anyone can visit the four airside terminals to grab a bite, go shopping, plane watch. Get some extra time with loved ones, just like you said. The all-access pass allows 25 people to visit each terminal between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And just as you said, you still have to go through security. Yeah. So got to be checked. Yeah. And you can register on their website. Uh, that airport, 70 shops, restaurants, bars, most of them located beyond the TSA checkpoints. Okay. And TPA is actually joining Pittsburgh International as the second in the nation to offer such a program. Oh, is that right? Pittsburgh's already doing it. Yeah. Oh, great. And officials say they'll expand TPA all-access if it's successful, I do have a airport spokeswoman to give us the latest. Let's listen. We're one of the only airports in the world that brews beer on site at Airside C at Cigar City Brewing. So we have some really unique offerings here at the airport, and this is just a way for people in our community to come here and experience them. Yeah, so pretty cool, right? It really is, and I hope it comes to Sky Harbor soon. Honestly, if you think about it, um, it's... Uh, by not letting uh, a non-ticketed passenger through, it's almost like you're saying, well, the TSA uh, is not able to do its job for people who are coming, who are otherwise coming through. Right. They can do it. Yeah. The TSA, I can just tell you, they do such a good job they here really in Phoenix. Do. I love our TSA agents here. They're fully capable of checking everybody who has a ticket and those who don't. Yeah. The one downside to it, Pilar, now keep in mind, in our business, we are always trained to look at every single possible downside. The only downside to it would be that you will have more people in line at TSA. Yeah, but if they only allow 25 at a time, Correct. For, like, you know what I mean? Correct. I believe, <laughs> and didn't they, I think they said they have four terminals there, yes. right? So four terminals times 25 per person, that's not going to slow anybody down. I think they could actually expand it I a do wonder bit if they more. give you a time limit, though, if like you have an hour, if it's 
kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. like have you ever been to an amusement park where back in the day, I don't know if they still do this, but mm -hmm. they would allow you to like put your credit card down as a deposit if you wanted to go shopping, not like go on the rides and stuff, but you could like go in and then you had to check back in in an hour and be really? like, look, I'm here. No. Yeah, and you oh, could that's do it. interesting. You could do it in Southern California amusement parks. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, so I wonder if it's like that. It's like you've got an hour, then you got to come back and let yeah. us know. Yeah. Done. No, I didn't. Uh, I, <laughs> the thing is, everything's so expensive when you go to those parks. We just took our grandkids to Disneyland yeah. the other day, uh, and all, you know, they they wanted to get right to Cars Land, oh, so there yeah, was no that's, time for that's shopping. That's one of the best rides for sure. I do have to tell you what. Here's my one quick tip for people who go to Disneyland. We got there kind of early, not super duper early. The park opens at eight. We got there at nine thirty. Go to Splash Mountain first. Go ahead, let yourself get a little wet. It was a cloudy <laughs> morning, and I. I was the guy in the front, but Pilar, we walked, the app said it was a 10 minute wait. Yep. There was maybe a 30 second wait just to get into the log. I love that park. I'm there about at least once a year. Yeah. And one time I made the mistake of being there on New Year's Day. Oh. And the park was so packed, oh, I was, was only it? able to get on Splash Mountain. Ooh, like, that's it. And then yeah. I walked out. Yeah. <laughs> well, Star Wars Land is coming pretty soon, so it's probably better to go now. Right. Rather than starting. It's around Memorial Day, I think, when Star Wars yep. Land comes. Three-day so. weekend. They got to do it. They, they plan this all so strategically. They know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they really do. Hey, Ron, thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stock market. They were calling it the big sell-off this morning, yeah, but it right. doesn't look as bad as we were thinking. No, I mean, honestly, it's an overreaction. This, the Chinese stock market was down, uh, I believe we're talking about the market in Shanghai, was down 5%. Now, if we had a 5% move, Pilar, that would be, what, about 14, 1,400 points down? Yeah. I mean, we're down 200 points. We started off uh, closer to uh, about 300, 350 points down. So we've, we've made some of it back. Yes, it's negotiating tactic. President Trump realizes negotiations are going to be happening this very week with the Chinese trade delegation. He wants to put some pressure on them. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a deal. Maybe we won't. But the, but the market is kind of starting to come back. All right, everybody. When we return here on News Now on Fox 10 Extra, we'll get you all